Hello all, I'm Sai and in today's video, I'm bringing to you my August reading wrap-up. August was not a great month for me as a whole itself, not just in terms of reading. Despite that, I managed reading a total of 18 books. Even though I'm saying that I have read 18 books, it's not like I enjoyed most of them. I can say that I even don't remember like two-thirds of two or three of the books that I'm going to talk about in this video. And it is very unlike me. I usually retain the stuff that I read really well. And August for some reason was just kind of an off month for me. I have made some action plans for September to just enjoy what I'm going to read without focusing on the numbers. So I hope September will be a better month. Having said that, I don't want to bum you out. This is not going to be a boring wrap up. I also have a lot of great reads from this month. There is also this manga series which I started that I'll be reviewing in parts starting from September. So without any further ado, let's get into the books right away. Let's start with the physical books. So I managed reading a total of 10 physical books, which means 10 books of my physical TPR, which is a good number for me. And the first book that I read for the physical books is Killing Commander Trey by Haruki Murakami. I do have the dust jacket of this one, but I don't want to put it on the book because it just looks far more beautiful without the dust jacket. And this is my second full length Murakami novel if I'm not wrong. I read Kafka on the show last year and I liked that book so much. Okay, I love the experience of reading the book rather than just the story or the book as a whole. And in this book, we follow our main character who is this portrait painter. And because of some reasons, he and his wife have separated and he's living in this separate house in this hilly region all alone by himself. It is also like a huge mansion which has a lot of paintings that the author can just go and get inspired by because the house itself belonged to a painter before him. During this time, there's this mysterious wealthy man who comes and gets his portrait painted by our main character. And once he gets that portrait done, he also has this other weird thing which is also related to painting a portrait for our main character. And from then on, a lot of unexplainable things start happening. It also has a lot of supernatural elements and magical realism elements going on throughout. Despite all that, I was not a huge fan of this book because a huge chunk of the story focuses on the author's love and adoration for Western music and art, which I'm not that much interested in. Because of that, I felt like the story was elaborated and extended at a lot of points and I could not just skim through them because it might have something to do with the plot. So that hindered my experience a little bit but this is the only Murakami book that I've read so far that has kind of a close ending so that was a different experience for me from this book and I rated it three stars. The next one is a literary fiction book and it is Small Pleasures by Claire Chambers. I'm sorry if the color theme of the video is getting a bit warm because for some reason tones of blue and green like this one just make my phone's camera freak out. In this book we follow our main character Jean who's a journalist and she is someone who's always engaged in writing some kind of article for this newspaper and it also happens in the early 50s in India. And the story starts with one woman writing a letter to the newspaper saying that her daughter is the result of a virgin birth. So Jean gets to deal with this case and she is going to investigate and see how this is going to progress on and see whether the child is actually the result of a virgin birth or something else has happened before that. Since it is also one story that is happening far back in time, it is not that advanced in technology and science. So they just can't go forward to a DNA test and see whether the child belongs to the mother or not. It also has some kind of a forward and romance going on, but it did not feel like a huge part of the story for me. It just felt meandering at multiple instances. The writing of the author was nice and I can see this main character will resonate with a lot of people in their own lives. So I rated this one 4 tests. Next we have a spiritual non-fiction book and it is Karma by Sadhguru. I should say that this was one of the most enjoyable non-fictions for me so far this year because I was continuously learning something new out of it. And spiritual books, especially like this one, just excite me for some reason because I'm just a spiritual person by nature. You can just see the amount of tabs that I put on the book. I have so much highlights and so much notes for this one. And I also have a dedicated video for this, which will be going up in the channel in the next couple of weeks. So if you're interested to know my thoughts about this book in depth, you can watch out for that video. And in this one, the author basically talks about what karma is and how the idea of karma has been completely changed by the Western point of view and how it is just treated as a system of crime and punishment by the West and how it has influenced the rest of the world to just see karma as such. He basically just talks about how karma is the act of life trying to fulfill itself to us. It was definitely a very insightful read for me and it also helped me break a lot of taboo that I had in my mind that were related to karma. I'd highly suggest many people to go forward and try this, especially if you're spiritual because I'm sure that it'll open a lot of doors for you. I loved reading it and I rated it 4.25 stars. The next one is the book club pick for August from me and it is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. 
which is kind of a gothic classic. And trust me, I just had so much fun while reading this book. It was not as high as my expectations were, but I should say that I thoroughly enjoyed my time while reading this book because the writing of the author in this one is just exquisite. Okay, you can read the book just for how beautiful the author has written it and how he makes you feel while reading the story because there are so many social commentaries and so much philosophy in this book that I'm sure I did not pick up in just one single read. I will be rereading this book continuously in the future also because I know that I can get a lot out of this one and more than that I can just reread it for the feel itself. Here we follow the story of this young man named Dorian Gray who gets his portrait painted by this painter who's his friend and his friend just gifts the painting to Dorian Gray himself. The plot is kind of like Dorian Gray makes this deal with the devil such that his appearance does not change and he just looks as attractive as he is in his 20s for the rest of his life and the painting will take all the traces of his age on its face and how that just changes his mentality towards life and how it makes him lead life is the actual plot of this book. It is definitely a delicious reading experience just because of the writing itself and I rated it 4 stars. The next one is an adult contemporary fiction and it is Freckles by Cecilia Ahern in which we follow Allegra Byrne who has a lot of freckles on her forearms hence she has this nickname Freckles which all her colleagues and friends used to call her and address her by. Now Allegra is kind of this parking sergeant who keeps giving tickets to people who cross the parking laws inside England and she's also living away from her family consciously because she wants to stay away from certain people from her hometown. She's also kind of a person who's very socially anxious at the same time, not that much great when it comes to having self-esteem. So I thought that this book was going to be Allegra's journey of finding self-esteem and just understanding how good a person she is. But it did not go in that way at all for some reason. I thought that the book will go in that direction, especially because of Cecilia Ahern. I've read two other books by her until now and both of those books are sad in their tone but at the same time they are also exceptionally hopeful but this did not sound hopeful at all at any instant for me. It just felt like the author was giving volley of the volley of sorrows for the main character and even towards the end I did not feel good at all after reading this book because it just felt so sad to me. So it was quite depressing and I rated it 3 stars. The next one is an autobiography and it is The Diary of a Young Girl by Anne Frank. I have been planning to read this book for years but I'm so glad that I read it at this point in my life because I don't think I could have been able to handle this book if I had read it like two or three years back because it is very heavy in stone. At the same time it was super honest okay. It is just the diary of this young girl named Anne Frank just as the title of the book suggests and she was a Jew in Germany who was just hiding from the Nazis who were just trying to kill them during that time. And trust me, more than anything, the thing that I saw about this book which just astonished me completely was the amount of honesty and maturity for a 13 year old to have, okay? She's between 13 and 16 years of age while she has written this diary and I was not even able to take that a person who's so young has so much insight in life, has so much maturity and understanding for people around them. At the same time, she just shows us how human she is through her writing and I could not even make myself stop reading this book at any point. I think I had to stop reading it because of work at certain instances and I finished reading the entire book in two days. If not for that, I'm sure that this would have been a single sitting read for me. Even though it is quite sad and depressing at multiple instances, it just made me feel so grateful that this woman lived in the world because if not for her journal entries, if not for her diary entries, so many atrocities that happened to certain people during that time would not be known by the world at this point. If you ask me, this should be one book that needs to be read by students in their schools because it would be perfect for that age range compared to adults. I'm so glad that I read it at last and I read it at 5 stars very easily. So after reading that kind of a heavy book, I wanted to read something so chill, happy and just heartwarming and I had the exact perfect book for it which is Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. Trust the hype for this book guys because it is just as good as everyone makes it out to be because from the starting to the end you will not feel sad or disappointed at any point at all. It will just make you feel so cozy and happy the whole time you are reading it. Because the author has this really nice style of writing that is perfect, okay? It's not overpowering, it is not underpowering. It's just the right amount which will make you feel cozy throughout the story. There are also some bad things that happen, but how the characters get out of it is the actual beauty of this book, if you ask me. Here we follow our main character, Bib, who's an orc, and she has had this kind of bounty hunting career for the past few years. 
when she decides to quit from that career and just open this coffee shop in this very small town sell coffee to the people there who have not even seen coffee in their lives and just live a very happy and comfortable life and after she decides to do that there are some obstacles that come in her way and how she deals with it with the help of her friends while building and maintaining this coffee shop is the basic plot of the book it is just as comfy and cozy as it sounds and trust me it is easily one of my favorite books by far this year and i'm also super excited to read the companion of this one which would be coming out a number called bookshops and bone dust and from the name of the book i presume that the book is going to be about a bookshop just like this was about a coffee shop and both of them put together is basically just my personality so yeah obviously i enjoyed this so much and i rated it 4.5 stars next we have a dystopian sci-fi book and it is life like by jay christoph which is the first book inside a trilogy and i should say that this is one of those books which i don't remember much of even after i finished reading it i think i finished reading the whole book in just one day itself and by the end i don't feel like i got a lot out of it even though there was so much going on inside here here we follow the story of our main character eve who lives in this post apocalyptic world where humanity has succumbed to artificial intelligence and technology as a whole because of which the entire world just looks like a huge trash can and there are people who are just surviving here and there due to some reasons and almost all the human beings in this world have some kind of artificial technology that is inside their body helping them just live and when eve comes into contact with this boy named ezekiel who's an android how their stories converge and what is going to happen then is the actual plot of this book it is super grim dark and it's done obviously because it's jay christoph and i just like the kind of humor just like in any of his other books also in this one despite that i can say that i did not take a lot out of this one and it was quite flat for me as an experience and i'd not blame the book for it because i was not in the great mindset because it started out great for me and after that i was just not able to follow it along properly at all so I rated this four stars, but I think I'll try and give it another read sometime in the future. The next one is a middle grade standalone fantasy book, and it is *The Girl Who Drank the Moon* by Kelly Barnhill. I was kind of skeptical before buying this book, and after reading it, I'm sure that I was very wrong in my opinion because it was super good in its tone. Here we follow the story of Luna, who's this kid that was born in this village where each and every year the youngest baby is sacrificed in the woods to be taken out by this witch and to be consumed by her. But what actually happens behind the scenes is the witch is actually coming and saving the baby from the jungle each and every year and she's going on and feeding them starlight and taking them to another city on the other part of the world so that they can find a family and just live happily there without knowing this the village has been sacrificing one baby each and every year which in turn is saved by the witch and taken to this other city she usually feeds starlight to the babies whom she takes from the village but accidentally once she just goes forward and feeds moonlight to the single child who turns out to be filled with magic so the witch just decides to bring up the child on her own and names her luna how this little child grows up with a witch a monster and a tiny dragon is the actual plot of this book it is super heartwarming and it's tone and trust me many more people need to read this one because sometimes we just forget how easy life can be to live if we just let it run its course and just be happy with the things that are happening around us and in order to do that we need to go back and be a child at some instances and this book made me feel so after i finished reading it hence i rated it 4.5 stars the last physical book is actually a reread and it's also a self help book which is how to win friends and influence people by dale carnegie i think i read this book two to three years back and it was kind of meh for me at that time because i did not enjoy it that much but at this point in my life i should say that i have taken away a lot more out of this one compared to my first three despite that i will not say that this is perfect for the current world it has a lot of things that are necessary for each and every one who's trying to develop their communication skills and just build up a proper social relationship with people but there are also some other things which just feel so outdated for the world in which we are living in currently the basic concept of this book is that the author tells us to be genuinely nice to people and it's not always possible some people just don't deserve to be treated nice by us because they give the same kind of aura and energy to us and there are also certain things which the author emphasizes when it comes to communication between people in a relationship that also did not resonate with me in the proper way because they were kind of gender stereotyping in a particular way despite all those things i should say that 80% of this book is super insightful and anyone who's trying to improve their communication skills in order to build up a proper rapport with people in their lives they need to try this one otherwise i can say that it is fine so i rated it four stars Moving on to the audiobooks, the first audiobook which I finished listening to is Manifest Your Destiny by Wayne W. Dyer. And I have read one other book by this author which is called Your Erroneous Souls, which too I read in 2020. It was a nice book and I should say that this one was much more 
in line with my thoughts especially during the past month during the end because i have been delving more into the law of attraction and certain things that are related to it more because i have always believed in the concept and i have practiced it consciously at multiple instances in my life i'm just trying to make my knowledge of it a bit more granular and not to understand how manifestation works and how we can make proper use of it with a very positive approach is the actual thing that the author says here. He explains us manifestation in terms of different parts or steps that we have to inculcate in our lives and just try to make them as our default practices so that it just becomes a way of our life. It was definitely a very positive book and I rated it four stars. The next one is some middle grade standalone fantasy again and it is Tavarent and the Star of Ishtar by Jasbinder Bilan. Here we follow the story of this young girl named Tamarind and her mother has died in the past because of some reasons and her father is getting married to this other woman and both of them are living in England along with Tamarind but because of some reason they have to go alone to some place and Tamarind is made to stay with her mother's family in Punjab and that's the first time for Tamarind to spend any time away from her father and also in India which is the half of her family that she has not visited at all in the flesh throughout her life. The one week of stay of Tamarind with her Punjabi family in the small village in India is the actual plot of this book. It starts kind of sad and towards the end it just becomes better and better because it feels good to see this young child getting to know her family and getting to know the history of her parents properly through her family because of certain things that happen. It is also kind of fantastical and supernatural in its tone because it has some things going on which are very much relevant for the plot and also make it even more heartwarming and interesting. I rated this one also 4 stars. The last audiobook is Astrophysics for People in a Hurry by Neil deGrasse Tyson. I've been meaning to read this book for at least 2 to 3 years now and I finally went forward and listened to the audiobook parallelly while I was working for one day and I should say that it was quite fun because just as the title of the book suggests it is basically for people who are trying to learn about astrophysics and don't know anything about it in the most simple and base level possible. Because of that it also was kind of negative for me because it did not go into depth for anything and just felt like the author was giving us a lot of facts but not giving any explanation for the facts which just left me craving for more. I could have gone forward and learnt about all those stuff from other books but I thought that this would be a bit more deep into the subject that the author has taken to explain inside the book. It was fun and its tone and it was also narrated by the author himself hence it was even more nice as a listening experience as an audiobook. Despite that it did not sit that well with me and I was also not able to retain most of the stuff from the book so I rated it 3.5 stars. Moving on to the ebooks, I just read one comic book alone and it is also from Prime Reading called Crema by this author named Johnny Christmas if I'm not pronouncing their name wrong. Here we follow this young woman who's been addicted to coffee ever since her childhood and she drinks a ton of coffee each and every day just in order to function normally like us human beings but it also has a very negative effect on her that is she keeps on caffeinating her body she is always anxious and she has also a lot of jitters throughout the time. She is also working in this Brazilian coffee shop in America and because of some reason the coffee shop has a fire accident and she meets the owner of the coffee shop and gets to go to Brazil along with her. And the crazy thing now is that our main character is also able to see ghosts and she is also trying to help those ghosts whom she see. How all of these concoct together and happen in Brazil as well as in America is the actual plot of this book and it just felt like a lot rushed to me more than anything. I think it could have worked far better it had been split into two volumes and not just all crammed into one book alone. So I rated this one also 3.5 stars. At last, talking about the one manga series which I started reading in August and I'm pretty sure that I'll be finishing reading the series in the next couple of months or so and it is Full Metal Alchemist by Hiromu Arakawa. I have read the first four volumes of the series and trust me I'm just completely enjoying it, okay? I've actually watched the anime of this one called Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood on Netflix. I did not finish watching the entire anime. I think I watched like one and a half parts of the five that were available back then. It is not available currently in Netflix for some reason. But I'm more interested in reading the manga now because I did enjoy the anime itself far back. I was not able to find that much time to watch the manga. Sorry, anime. That's why I did not finish watching it. But I'm pretty sure that I will be finishing the series because my friend has the entire series with them as Kindle books and I'm just borrowing their account and reading from it. If I'm not wrong, there are totally 27 volumes in this manga series and I've finished 4 of the 27 so far. I'm also planning to do like review or discussion videos for each and every one of the 6 volumes as I finish reading them. So I just have 2 more volumes to do the first video and I'm pretty much pumped for it because I'm just completely enjoying the series and I've rated all the 4 volumes so far 5 stars each. Here we follow these two brothers Alphonse and Edward who are alchemists in this world and because of some reason they are also super powerful while trying to bring back their mother 
from death something horrible happens to both of them and they have to deal with the repercussions right now it is extremely dark at instances and also super funny and just action packed and adventurous at multiple instances it just feels so perfect for me since it also has this beautiful brother brother sibling relationship going on i'm totally eating it up so just as i said before i rated all the four volumes five stars so yes guys those are all the 18 books which i managed to read in the month of august and i'm also super excited for september because i have a ton of books which are really great and i'm super excited to line up to read and i'll definitely be talking about them in the channel also as much as i can i'm also planning to do some personal development as well as non-fiction videos starting this month so you can watch out for them if you're interested and don't forget to leave your august wrap up in the comments below because i'd like to know what you have read and also get some recommendations from you guys so if you did enjoy watching today's video don't don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also share it to your friends. And if you want to get more content from me, do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.